<laughs> yeah so and like another i want to tie that into like working out so like when i'm working out if i'm not eating like that's a problem like yeah if i get nervous and about things like and i'm working out like it's like just defeating that workout like all that stress relief goes out the window if i don't get a meal to you know to repair my my body fibers and such that's funny that you say that because <laughs> when i i was at home and i ran this weekend and i didn't have my some regular smoothies that i have here in portland mm -hmm. which i have like banana and mango and strawberry and grapes and peanut butter and greek yogurt and coconut milk and almond milk and hemp seeds and some other powder stuff and i mix it all in there and there's probably like a thousand calories in that, mm -hmm. right? Oh, and and a teaspoon of, of cannabis infused coconut oil. Bang, um, just a little bang. And there's probably you know like I said a thousand calories now, but it I burn it off, and it's so. It's such a it, eating all that is such a what the fuck am I talking about? Okay, never mind. <laughs> Welcome to episode thirty one. I'm Tyler Hurst. Today, Casey and I answer questions like which kind of strains are good for sex, which are good for weight loss, and what percentage of the time we're high. I'm also excited to make some cannabis-infused chocolate with Lori and Mary Jane this weekend. Oh, yeah. Casey, tell us about yourself. Boom. Well, I'm a storyteller, freelance writer, bud tender, photo booth operator, kind of jack of all trades. So we are here today talking cannabis in Portland, Portland Oregon. Oregon. And up? we have had, what did we have today to start off with? We had some MTF, a.k.a. Montanuska Thunderfuck. From? Ooh, where did I get that? TJ, From right? TJ's From Organic TJ's? Provisions. And they are in, uh, they are what, Eugene? That's Eugene. Eugene. Yeah, that's some outdoor grown um, tasty treats, man. Yeah, they were, they were well known. I, I believe they got an award for their Durban Poison before. I've had TJ stuff. I've always, I've always very much liked it. They're definitely, yeah. they're definitely a, um, a chain. Uh, it feels like they're going to be a big like chain, I guess would make sense. Like a local chain. Does that make sense? Like a bunch of stores. Like I think it feels like they're going to have a store in every city. Yeah, I get yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. They're they're doing really good things. Yeah, and then all I remember when I first started uh, covering cannabis, the everywhere I went there was a TJ's uh, joint. Yeah, everywhere. It's, it's been a few years for me hearing their names as well. Yeah, it was it was pretty cool. I like um, I like having companies that you know they're it's good stuff and that mm -hmm. Matnuska TF was was pretty good. Mm -hmm. So today we are we are talking about uh, questions. We are talking about questions that we get asked about cannabis because Casey is a bud tender. Yeah. And I write about cannabis, and so we get asked a bunch of questions from our friends, from younger people, from customers, from clients, from parents, from lovers, from producers, and all that kind of good stuff. So we're going to talk about one of those things. So the main question that we're going to start off with, and this is something that I've gotten asked a bunch, and I'm going to ask you, Casey, first. So are you really high all the time? <laughs> I get that so much. Like... Oh, so it's associated with working at the dispensary? They're like, oh, since you work here, you must be high all the time, right, man? Right? Yeah. <laughs> now, Oregon State law says that uh, you cannot use cannabis on premises at mm -hmm. dispensaries. Yeah. And you are also, um, I also believe that you are not allowed to come to work stoned. Like yeah, there's no not, like visibly and yeah, there is no yeah, the there is no there is there they do not in they very much it's not okay it's not a good thing uh, to come to work you know blitz down your mind on anything but that's yeah yeah but I'm gonna guess and say that almost every bud tender thing any substance all right so that was the Amazon guy that just knocked really loud yeah okay. startled us a little bit a little bit. Just because we're really baked. Yes, we are. So we're, <laughs> we're back now. Right. Uh, the the question was, are you really high all the time? And we were very careful to say and that uh, that consuming cannabis on premises dispensaries is legal, and it is. I do not know of any bud tenders or patients who do that. I've never seen it, um, but I have. I have a guess that most of the people working in dispensaries are probably under the 
have used cannabis in the day prior to working? Would you? I don't know. I don't even want to talk about this. But I don't know why. Why do I think that though? I guess I guess that'd be a good question because they are they are still all medical dispensaries. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Who does that, Who says that you can't have a little bit of coconut oil in your coffee though? You can't. I do. Yeah, I do. But that. I also don't have a job, mm-hmm. so that's. I mean, also don't have. Sorry, I don't have a boss, mm-hmm. so that's also part of it too. Yeah. But I mean, for me, it doesn't really matter what they're doing. I don't, it doesn't affect their job, and that's fine. I, I love if it's it. It's affecting you say, like what now, you're, how you're I guess, operating. Yeah, for I guess sure my question is how many, what percentage of buttoners do you think are using cannabis that day? If you could guess, I'd say to be safe, 50%, okay. which okay. is a high number, but okay. let's be honest. If, well, if, a lot of them if are, you throw in all like medical dispensaries, a lot of them are, well, I'm talking, I'm talking about we all we have are medical dispensaries. Okay. Like, that's all we have. So. If it, most of the many of them are going to be medical marijuana uh, 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 card holders too, mm-hmm. I mean, there's a very high percentage, a huge, huge a very percentage, high percentage of butt yeah. tenders, and this does not mean does not mean that just they're addicts looking to get drugs. It no, means they are people who need it. the medicine, and they are working in that field because they know a lot about it. Yeah, there's nothing weird about that at all. I've done that with computers. I've done that with many many things. It's just a different version of yeah. You the use the product, product whatever. So, question for Casey. So, are you so are you high all the time since you're a butt tender at work? No, no. Um, so, like, there'll be days where I won't have the coconut oil in my coffee. Okay. And I won't smoke before I go to work, right. or I won't I won't smoke till I come home. Okay. Like, now, are those that. now are those better days? Are they worse days? Are they different days? What's that like? That's a day like if I'm using it mostly for medicine. If I'm using it for pain, that's a day where. It's a good day where I, I didn't have to use it to relieve okay. like an ache or a spasm okay. or like just straight up pain, like uncomfortable pain. Okay. And uh, yeah, like that's – it's even if I am using it though, if I did smoke, mm-hmm. it would be – I'd try to be – I wouldn't smoke flour. I'd smoke um, – I'd vape something okay. trying to keep it lighter. Like I'm not trying. Even if I did smoke before work, it wouldn't be um, to get blitz. Yeah, I see. I, I, I just like, not to like. That's that. I guess that that was that was my next question. I I have this theory that you're more using like a bud tender would use cannabis in order to perform better at work. Yeah. I mean, you're going to work. Like you don't hate it. You're you're going to be able to talk to people and be able to talk about stuff a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're more comfortable doing that because you have. Whatever you know, you had a joint in the way to on the on the way there. I don't really care. That seems like a cup of coffee to me. I'm okay with that. Totally. Um, I would. Th- all... I would just. I just think a lot. I. I'm just curious to how many bud tenders you think are, um, are usually having a joint in the way to work. I don't think it's. I think it's going to be pretty normal. It's not like having a beer in the way to work. People are going to going to try to no. try to tell me that, and I know that's the comparison. It's much closer to having a cup of coffee in the way to work. Yeah, and you can really pick a strain that's going to not. Make it like a beer at work. Yeah, I now I have some experience More with those random strains because I did that, uh, that when I did the nine nine strains. Mm-hmm. That was really hard. But once I figured out what the strain, once I knew what the strains were, it was much easier to mm-hmm. to plan all that too. But I I think there's a stigma of of a lot of uh, from a lot of uh, you know non users or or new users or whatever else that all the bud all bud tenders are essentially pot are essentially huge potheads that just want to get and baked all the time and all they do is they get super super stoned before they go to work and they go to work and they get super stoned there and they go home and they get super stoned again i don't think that's true i don't think i think that either. most bud tenders uh but by very by the fact that they're able you know they're working mm-hmm. um are using a lot less than people think that they are uh a lot less often i guess or or or, yeah. or whatever it's not a 24 7 smoke fest it's just mm-hmm. a yeah i might have a half um, i would join the way to work I'm going to have something, maybe a lunch or whatever else if I need it. But, you know, I don't really – it's not an everyday thing. It's not a requirement or what thing. And I think that a lot of people sort of – for some reason, we, we know that bartenders don't go to work and get hammered while they – but they know we know they do afterwards. Yeah, or every once in a while they might have a, a sip here and there, try something or toss one back. Is that bad? I don't think it's bad. I worked in environments where, like, if they didn't do that, it would be bad. I mean, if you're a bartender and someone buys you a drink, do you turn it down? Of course not. Yeah. I mean, unless it's a super busy night or whatnot, but I don't know. Yeah. Even then, like, if you could handle it, why not? 
If you like make a cool situation there, like yeah. have a good experience with a couple of people, like they might come back and buy a couple more beers. But I, don't I know. bet, I, don't I know. bet the, the amount of people able to drink and bartend is far fewer than the amount of people who are able to have a joint before work and go bud tend. Oh yeah, because I agree. cannabis Happily. is so much. Or alcohol is so much worse. Cannabis is so much more enhancing because most of the time, hell, the butt tenders are using it to get over some say, some sort of social anxiety or whatnot that makes mm-hmm. you just want to talk to people more. Yeah. I mean, you're going to screw up sometimes and get yeah. something too stony and that's going to, you know, you're bad. But Yeah. Um, you took just one too many puffs. On yeah, I just think it's a, it's, a, it's a different thing. So, yeah, uh, and to, you know, to answer the question again that I asked you, I'm high all the time because I, I have coconut oil every day yeah. now. And... Again, I don't have a normal job, so I don't have to worry about any of the testing mm-hmm. type stuff. But it's massively improved my outlook on life. Yeah. And after a while, and we'll talk about this in another. We talk about this in, in another another podcast, another episode of uh, tolerance. Once you build up a little bit of a tolerance to it, you don't get high anymore. You get the same benefits. You get the same um, uh, anti anxiety. You get the same anti inflammation. You get the same uh, those you know those things you like about it, but you don't get that same high. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not like you are a drug addict chasing that fix every morning. It's just a, it's a dose. It's a medicinal dose. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was on psych meds, I was high all the time too. I had to take one psych med at night. So it would kick in when I was sleeping and I had to take a uh, one when I had, was on my ADHD stuff, I would get up early and take it and then mm-hmm. let it kick in while I was sleeping. Cause that super energy, totally unnatural energy. And that's what it felt like when it kicked in. I hated it. Mm-hmm. Now, for cannabis, it's the opposite because it feels so natural. I actually, um, I'm getting high all the time, uh, take uh, dabs before I run. Mm-hmm. And that natural <laughs> runner's size even enhanced even more. It's yeah. not fake. It's not, it's not, doesn't feel manufactured. I can't drink when I run. I can't even be somewhat, I, but I can, I can have as much cannabis as I want. And it feels awesome. So I'm high all the time. I really yeah. like it. <laughs> I guess I'd call me like 80%. Yeah. Because, like, I, I'll do if I didn't have um, coconut oil in the morning. I would, I would definitely have had some RSO yeah. or something at night, and that lasts. That's going to be in my system for the next uh, good. I don't know, eight, six to eight hours. Yeah, that's the nice thing about about edibles is you don't take nearly as much. Mm-hmm. I mean, now that I'm using edibles regularly. It is, you know, a dose in the morning and then a dose maybe after lunch mm-hmm. and then maybe something at night too. Yeah. Or it's just flour at night. Yeah, and that it's mu- than it's smoking. it's it's much uh, it's much smoother. You get you get way more uh, uh, I think you get way more benefits because it lasts longer. Yeah. And it's and it's kind of a, it's not really a timed release, but it's more of a of a steady release. You don't get that 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 super high either. Uh, that I really like that that uh, I mean, if I could just choose one, if I could choose one way to consume cannabis and couldn't have any other ones, I think RSO would be my choice. Yeah, I think I would just eat it. Yeah, I'd have RSO so I could put it in different. Yeah, I mean, I like all the rest items. of the things. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I love all their kinds of cannabis, but if I had to choose and just have one, it would it would be RSO because it does it does all the things I need it to do for me with much less of a high, um, uh, a peak high than. Mm-hmm. The functionality items. is at a yeah. high. Yeah, but I mean, it has. I mean, using using RSO and coconut oil has absolutely changed my life. It's changed my the way I look and the way I think about stuff. So I mean, this is. Um, yeah, I have to. I agree. I would definitely choose that. It's lubed me up in a good way for mm-hmm. life. Yeah, psychological lube to get through stuff. Mm-hmm. We are going to do the next question. So, bud tender. Now, I'm going to talk about this a little bit in a little bit because I've done a review on this, but Casey's going to first talk about. All right. So you get asked about intimate stuff yeah. and weed. Now, do you mean intimate stuff while on weed? Do you mean intimate stuff while using weed? Tell me more about these 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 sex based questions you get as a butt tender. So one time I had this really like old older gentleman, very slick older ge- gentleman, probably in his like mid sixties. He kind of looked like an a beach boy, okay, <laughs> an aged beach boy. The golden pony, and um, he came in and he was talking me up, and I could tell he was kind of nervous in a good way, and he was trying to get to some point about why, what, like what strand that he wanted, and he like puts his fist down on the table, and he like looks at me in the eye, and he's like, "I need something for intimacy," and I just kind of started laughing, like not like making fun of him, but. I, all of a sudden, I just blurt out, 
like, honestly, man, I think any of these are going to help you. <laughs> and he started laughing with me. And he's like, you know, I'm on board with that. And that's what I thought you were going to say. And, like, that's how our conversation started uh, about talking about strains that we had presently that could help with intimacy. Okay. Yeah. And um, I, I'll jump into So, like, how I look at that, I like, we had definitely had products that would help. Like, we had lube. So, Lumis Botanicals makes a do like pumps spray like coconut oil lube that's supposed to be like a roller coaster of pleasure i guess it's like yeah i use really the, yeah you gotta be careful like um, you only need a little bit i use the uh foreplay the or an early of uh, empower empower oil which okay. also does that which also does a yeah. a, a for a lube it makes it's called things yeah it's called sensitive. for it's called foreplay now and so we use uh, my wife and i reviewed that Mm-hmm. Uh, the a precursor to that, like a sample of that before, and uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, she uh, she she wants more of it. So, it. Uh, uh, I mean, one of the questions that we have later in this list that we're going to talk about today is: Do topicals work? Well, mm-hmm. um, sexually, yeah, <laughs> yeah, especially no and doubt. especially for women, uh, much more so, just because there's much more surface area to 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 up, you know, to Enhance. make that work. Yeah. Um, but okay, so yeah, all so right. like I, I didn't even I was thinking that in the back of my mind, like I knew that was an option I could talk with him, but he was talking about smoking, so like yeah. I'm thinking more like enhancing like like he's trying to enhance his mental ex- like pleasure as well as which, like physical which too. Town? So we actually had one of our strains. So Panda Farms does um, Maple Leaf Number Two, okay. which is an indica that's supposed to be. Like it's known to be a very intimate strain, so like good for hanging out with a loved one, listening to music, and like just kind of gets the like the vibe there. Like it's not so much like um, like a male enhancement. Like yeah. I don't know if that's what he was talking about either. But like yeah. the first thing pop man, just like something to like make the mood right. And yeah. personally, I've tried that strain, and that's what I started to tell him. Like, hey man, like I smoked this with my wife. Like we made some dinner. And, like we hung out and had like a romantic evening type of thing like yeah. that's what you're talking about like yeah. intimacy like that's going to get the party started and yeah. like he smelled it and it's like a really like fruity like sweet berry bones. sweet smell yeah. like it kind of it fits that profile like the ro- romantic profile good. <clears throat> good yeah so that's 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 one that was like my very first ever intimacy yeah, I wonder if that's more. I wonder if that's more terpy. I wonder if that's more terpene based or cannabinoid based. Yeah, aromatherapy, yeah. essential oil type of thing. Yeah, because we've definitely. I know we talked about for, for Potlander for the last mm-hmm. one. We talked about uh, sexy time ones, and that was high THCV essentially, which is a psychoactive yep. cannabinoid. And uh, so I'm curious if because there was obviously there is the durban poison is the is a has full of THCV, but it's not really a cell that sexy of a strain because it mm-hmm. literally smells like hemlock. So it sounds like yeah. it's, someone's going to die essentially, mm-hmm. which isn't a good smell to have when you're about to get intimate. <laughs> I'd love, I, I'd much rather love a maple leaf smelling something than than hemlock. Yeah, um, but that's, yeah, so that's cool. That's 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 interesting because you definitely want because that's you, if it has an indica, it's definitely an opposite approach. So yours was mm-hmm. relax the body and then enhance the the aroma. Yeah, and so the was... THCV part is just enhance the mental aspect and that and assuming then that will then carry everything else Mm -hmm. so i'm thinking of like a full body experience and in terms of that that strain and it just happened to be there and i was reading about it and he kind of was my first you get a lot of those questions yeah i do and they just from that point on they just got more personal and like more like graphics aren't the term like they like describe things but they said they wanted to do things (laughs) Like so, this next example, like I'll never forget. Please God, this. what? what yeah. A very so it was another like silver fox, golden pony type of older man came in, and he was talking about sexy time very openly. Though, like he had his partner there, this woman was there with him, and she that's, was. That's gotta be awkward. She, yeah, it was, and like they're both are very like touchy feely and vocal, and like, um, like <laughs> they're they. Were, they were just all over each other. It was inappropriate as fuck. And, like, the guy, like, they couldn't, like, settle down. And I'm like, guys, like, you got to pick a strain. Like, I showed you, like, we talked about certain ones. And, like, they were just restless. And then finally he's like, you know what, man? He, like, gets really close to me. Kind of so his wife is looking at the clones. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I need something so I can fuck all night. Like, I need to fuck all night. 
and he like looks like behind him like to see if the but other butt tender heard him and I don't know if she did or not, <laughs> but I didn't start laughing. I was like, all right, man, like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go on Leafly. Have you ever heard of Leafly? You yeah, know, cannabis to... doesn't work exactly like exactly. that. Exactly. So, like, I'm thinking, okay, he needs something for arousal or male enhancement. So, I he literally psychoactive, yeah. I literally go to Leafly on my computer, and I type in male enhancement, and I think – what was I want to say that one of the options was Alaska Thunderfuck, which is related to what we smoked today. Uh, funny story. And then, uh, man, I'd have to Google or I'd have to leafly search it again. But I started like telling them about these, and like we didn't happen to have any of them. We had some like crosses yeah. that some related genetics. So like he got them based off of what I told him for male enhancement. Like he never came back, but. He seemed really happy to go try it out. So, cool. yeah. Cool. So, sometimes they're bizarre. Like, people will tell you straight up what they need it for. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they'll be really vague and you have to kind of, like, pull it out of them yeah. in a really, like, friendly, mm-hmm. professional way. Mm-hmm. So, next one is, do topicals work? I Yeah. With, as far as now, intimate they stuff, don't, yes. they don't. Now, for, for, for intimacy, they work usually... Um, more sense it makes things more sensitive yeah they work really well the first time but for some things the idea of cannabis topicals is you are enhancing your system in in the spot of wherever you're putting it on so you actually need to to Enhanced apply a couple of times uh before it, you'll start to get the effects but once the effects start it actually gets really good really fast and this means if you have a a rash or whatever or a or a or a sore Pulled or something you're, you're using using for it um, don't be surprised when the when the immediate um, pain relief is not the pain relief is not as much of an opiate or whatever else. The pain the pain does not just turn off. It's not like that. Mm-hmm. It's more of a much a much healthier healing type of of. It takes it down pain to relief. a bearable notch. Yeah. It uh, well, what it does, I mean, it's just reducing the amount of pain of pain signals that are going to your head, so you're able to 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 relax it. Well, but I just I want to to understand people that the using cannabis for really anything is more much more about a a, a, a approach over time, mm-hmm. rather than an immediate immediate effect. Uh, you're going to get your best. Yes, you can get high the first time. Yes, you can get yeah. some pain relief the first time. Yes, you can point. get all those things. But the high really, to be honest with you, the highs aren't always unexpected highs that aren't always as useful because you sort of want the you sort of want the uh, the predictable highs because you want to be able to use it for whatever yep. reason and that includes any sort of um a pain management and things like that but uh, i would just say when you use cannabis topicals if it doesn't feel like it's working as much as you think it should right away mm-hmm. be more patient with it than you than than you're used to because it'll be w- way more worth it yeah um I've noticed, like I, I've noticed one day, like oh, I tried this thing. Oh, it doesn't really feel that good the first day, but the second day it feels amazing. Yeah. Um, and so it just has to do with the way your body interacts with your endocannabinoid system and all that stuff. That the way it interacts. That's why a lot of cannabis topicals have other stuff in them to help. Mm-hmm. Warming agents. Yes. And to help that herbs process. That are um, mm-hmm. relaxing. I mean, really, if you could just cover yourself in cannabis every day and then have it work that way, that'd be a really good idea. Fuck, if you could soak in it every day. I have soaked in it. You should soak. Empower has soaking. <laughs> there's, there's a bunch of soaking. Uh, if I could do that every single salts. day, I feel like I'd get some really crazy benefits. Well, you really do. What I noticed is you heal much quicker. Yeah, that's and that what was, I mean. And that's when I was on my Body. bike ride, my hundred when I did my 116 miles, my mm-hmm. longest ride, my longest uh, New Bergen back. I soaked in Empower and Empower soaking salts when I got back, and all the rashes and stuff that had started in the places where you normally get rashes when you ride a bike for the first time in three years um, went away real fast. And sorry, they felt they felt much better, and they didn't go away that night. But the next morning, when I woke up, uh, they were gone. It wasn't like a like a super drop healing. off when you came out of bed, just mm-hmm. like oh no. Yeah, my wife, <laughs> um, my wife knows that. She said you're like she goes you you heal like like not like Wolverine like I don't heal like you can't see me heal. Mm-hmm. But every morning I wait every day I complain like, oh better, god I hurt so better. much or well every every day I'll complain about it, I hurt so much and I'll put cannabis on I'll put cannabis oil on and be like oh I'm so sore and then she'll like the next day I'll bounce out of bed like hey, I am fine and she's like you were sore yesterday I know but. Now I'm okay. Now it's weird, <laughs> but uh, and so that happens a lot. So mm-hmm. it just takes it just takes a little bit more time, a couple more applications. And I thought that was an interesting thing as someone who's you know training and running all the time and hurting myself on purpose. Yeah, 
uh, I only hurt for a couple hours after the workout, which is exactly the time I should be hurting. I don't hurt the next day. consistent. The one tube of it is not going to do you justice. Like, yeah, you no. only use one thing at it. Yeah, so... Uh, I have, it's much better than normal painkillers because it doesn't it doesn't kill all the pain right away, but it makes it much better in the long run, and that's mm-hmm. really the what I wanted. And so I think it's a it's a, I can see why the NFL really why the NFL players really wants cannabis as a painkiller because it's the day to day stuff. It makes that day to day chronic pain a little bit better. It just lubes all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not going to make your broken leg feel better, but it's to make your pulled back feel better. Yeah, and just to rub rub that on a hamstring oh, that's, that's what I do. Balled up. Ooh. That's what I do. I used to have I used to take ibuprofen and all that I, almost all the time, and now all I have is the this cannabis. Is way better. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you tell what's in strain, uh, edible strains? Can you, or can you tell strains? Something? I can't, uh, sometimes yeah. so, like very rarely I can usually get a uh, sativa, uh, indica, uh, that's things. What, yeah, that's what, like, uh, but strain specific that it, usually I don't think I've ever had. I think a, it's more of a mental thing for yeah. me. Somebody tells me it's a sour diesel brownie. Like mm-hmm. I'm going to be like, all right, so it's going to be a little racy and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But I can, but I can definitely tell if I have a, a sativa, edible versus indica edible there's an mm-hmm. i can tell the difference and i've had coconut oil had a difference too yeah. I've, I've actually had different mixes that i was like oh this is this is way more of a, i'm my mind is soaring right now and i'm not even relaxed at all which kind of sucked like because that's what i want i want more of an i mean, you we expect more of an indica high from edibles i yep. believe just because but you get a an indica buzz and it gets a little weird yeah an indica high is easier is easier to control a little bit you might fall asleep but you won't freak out mm-hmm. Uh, but a sativa, that that head high where you start to freak out, that's when people get in trouble. And that's when they start going to the hospitals that's and where stuff. That's the paranoia comes You're fine, out. by the way. It's all in your head. You're making it up. But Drink some fucking water. Yeah, you know? yeah stop having so much. <laughs> uh, you know where I did feel so, it, though, so, is the hybrid. I had like a hybrid chocolate, and I definitely was like, oh, I can tell the difference between like just having a sativa and an indica chocolate. Now. Oh, so it was much more. Now, do, do you like that better? I liked it, yeah. I the liked, I liked okay. the balance. It's much more balanced, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, that was my that was that's what I figured it was. Because yeah, really there's a there's it. a bunch of ta- uh, a taffies, fat taffy, and then reefer rolls mm-hmm. that I have, and I and I've I've never had the hybrid. I've only had an indica or sativa, so I'm really curious to try. I want I might, I might try that hybrid and Do see it. what it's like. But I can definitely tell the difference between the two of them. I love it mm-hmm. uh, when I run. I use sativas when I run before I use sativas and after I use indicas. Yeah. I want to be relaxed when I'm running, but I found a. Uh, let's see. Uh, Peak extracts, uh, sour diesel chocolate was cool. good for working out. Good, yeah. Sour diesel, uh, sour diesel, be much more of a hybrid. But yeah, if you're working mm-hmm. out, that's for sure. Because I'm, um, I would recommend, I would, I would stay away from indicas for working out and go with hybrids for mm-hmm. for lifting, and then go sativas for running or for long for long things for long repeated things. Go with sativas. I did. Oh, another Mix good one. Up. I don't know if they're if they're going to keep being around with the wild orange sativa chocolate. Okay. Ooh, that I one's like really ones. active. Like I like that one for adventure. It's not okay. so much like working out, but like getting on the bo- the bus, walking to Mount Tabor, going oh. to grab some food, doing some work type of thing. Oh. Like one of those kind of a days. Yeah, I really miss the um, the Jolly Greens right before they switched. They were RSO right before they switched from RSO. Uh, they were there was a Blue Dream mm. a package, which is just a, a, a very basic. Uh, people are like Blue Dream, shut whatever. It's a hybrid. It's a popular hybrid. It's a very balanced. Because it fucking works. It's, it's a very not... balanced hybrid. And so I actually, that's what I had. I had one of those every day before I went and drove around all the dispensaries. Yeah. Uh, and I hate driving and I want to kill everyone usually when I drove. And I had four days of peaceful bliss. Uh, Sometimes on, that can happen. On that Blue Dream. I had one 40 milligram, 30 milligram thing every morning. And I had an amazing day every time. So, yes, I think they, it was, it was, it was good. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I guess I have had it. a, I guess I have had a hybrid and I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. Um, we are, I think, wow, we're talking a long time, but we're going to, we're going to talk. We're, uh, I mean, we got, who cares? Well, it's just 27 minutes. Who cares? Keep talking. Next one. Next question. Weight loss. Weight loss. So, obviously, there's no calories in smoke. Yeah. Yes, there's it's no not calories so in much dabs. Like a supplement to losing weight. Yeah, there are a lot of calories in edibles though eating. because, you know, there's sugar and all that stuff. So, mm-hmm. Casey, just smoking, can you lose weight with cannabis? Yes. And the way I know it as is like smoking a sour diesel or smoking a green crack and getting super active, like mm-hmm. using it as like a precursor to my workout. Mm-hmm. That has been my experience and as well as like using a CBD 
edible for the healing process, mm-hmm. like kickstarting that. So like your body feeling good, I feel like it sets you up to lose weight, but I don't know so much about cannabis specifically making you lose weight. But what do you know about that? I have used cannabis to lose weight, Casey. <laughs> Thank you for asking that. <laughs> Uh, what, right before I got married in 2012, mm-hmm. uh, so this is actually 2011, or it was 2011 is when I, was when I figured this out, but I wanted to lose some weight, and I read a book uh, called Chubster by uh, Martin Sismar, who uh, 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 restaurant, uh, arts, arts and culture editor for yep. one week, and uh, Potlander, um, Potlander uh, runs a Potlander, Potlander editor, uh, Chubster, and it's about how he lost weight. Uh, counting calories because he didn't want to eat eat well or he just wanted to, to, to lose weight. Like yeah. his, his goal wasn't to be in the best shape or whatnot. His goal was to help other hipsters uh, lose weight. So, like, cool. <laughs> so I thought it was kind of funny and I read it and there's a lot. My dietary uh, choices didn't quite line up with his like, oh, this lean cuisine thing is only like I didn't I didn't I don't actually have I didn't eat the the um, the. Uh, packaged foods that he recommended i just made my own but what i did was i switched from drinking to cannabis completely and that's when i started that's Losing when i gave up way, when like i gave up drinking and i from january 2012 to march 2012 and there's a uh, i use lose it so i used a calorie counting app mm-hmm. uh in Ch- and that's what chubster said is to count calories and then i started tracking everything that i ate and i replaced alcohol all all alcohol so my nightly whatever i wanted with with cannabis at and i lost 23 pounds doing that um i don't know if it was the cannabis like did cannabis help help that i don't i don't know burning calories i don't know yeah then again earlier this year i mean i've talked about this a lot is earlier this year i started using (laughs) using i started using cannabis like 24 hours a day almost Mm -hmm. because i was using essentially i would eat right away when i eat coconut oil right away when i woke up and i would take it before i went to bed too and i've lost as my cannabis has uh, intake has increased i've lost 30 pounds of this year alone yeah um and that wasn't a conscious choice there was no dietary i mean i eat really well anyway just because i run a lot and because i'm a celiac so i have to be really careful about it it sucks so, I mean, I'm already sort of trained myself to eat that, but I don't know. Did can was cannabis helping stimulate my systems to give me energy? Was it, I mean, did, was it cannabis was helping me lose? Was it cannabis helping motivate me to keep losing um, weight? I, I don't know. What do you, I've done I it twice now. Motivating for like, no doubt. I yeah. just don't know the science yet behind the, like the physical, like what it's doing to your system. Like, yeah. I'm really like curious. Starting your metabolism. I mean, you talk about munchies and stuff and all that, and it, that never well, really like a, wasn't a problem. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't really a problem. I, that really surprised me mm-hmm. because the munchies is only for a couple, only with a couple of strains because yeah. it's a cannabinoid thing. And usually it is much more, um, it's much more lifestyle based than it is cannabis based. Like, I don't think it's all that, mm-hmm. You, uh, uh, I was, there's also been a couple of, uh, studies that I've seen that showed that cannabis users tend to be, uh, tend to be skinnier than, than alcohol, than, than non-cannabis users. Yeah. I've noticed that about myself. I don't know. Sure. I don't know. I, what, I don't know if I'm burnt since I've been smoking oh. more than drinking yeah. over my, like over the last like 10 years. Okay. Now, have you ever consciously stopped drinking as much and had more cannabis? Oh yeah. Okay. Like Consciously, that started when I started doing edibles. I started right. replacing edibles for beer at parties. Like right. I would have one beer, yep. and whereas I would probably would have had like six or seven. Yeah. See now, no, no. <laughs> I now I did that. Now I replaced because I, I wouldn't have any beer. See, I at get all. sick with it, so I definitely, I definitely replaced. That's what I. That's exactly mm-hmm. what I did at parties. That's funny that you did the same thing. And that's why I did. I took a brownie to a party instead of having the beer. I had the brownie and then I had whatever else. Uh, and I had just as much fun mm-hmm. as any of those jokers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a couple times I shared my brownie, and everyone got mad at me because they were too strong for yeah, them. I started bringing them and dosing people, <laughs> out. Yeah. trying to help them out. Nice. <laughs> So I think it can. Uh, I don't think. I guess. I guess the 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 clear message here is that cannabis definitely doesn't hurt it. There is no. Mm-hmm. It just it changes. Yeah, I, it's, smoking cannabis is not going to turn you into a, into a fat lazy slob stoner. Like there's something else doing that that, that you get mm-hmm. the munchies and all that stuff because most of the people using cannabis are in a lot better shape than you think. Yeah, and I know that's weird, but go to any 
well, the one cannabis club we have, we go to any really cannabis event. And yeah, sure, there are a lot of bigger people, but the ratio is far less than at a, like a, a an alcohol fueled event yeah. or whatnot. Um, I'm not saying everyone's you know we're not in great shape, and I'm not saying you should anyone. Not everyone should be. And there's anything wrong mm-hmm. with whatever else. I'm just saying it feels like the people that use cannabis, uh, as opposed to the people who drink, are uh, more active. Mm-hmm. relatively and in better shape relatively to their you know whatever their current condition yeah, you'd be surprised like yeah. if you did a poll and like everybody took a step out and well, the open and mm-hmm. people would be like why you s- you smoke and you eat edibles and you like yeah. you ran that and you yeah. like competed with those people and blah 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 like it blows people's minds yeah so. it's impressive it's it's pretty cool because it's you know you forget we keep saying this and like yeah. it's it's medicine like it's medicine for some people it's not medicine use it the right way it's not medicine for everybody all the time mm-hmm. because that depends on the dosages but if you use it the right way it very much can be and that's what these people are using it for they're not getting high all the time just to get high all the time they get high all the time because they feel normal when you're high and you feel better and it's helping you so yeah. why would you stop i talked about that why would i keep why would i stop it's doing pretty good right yeah one way that i I would say it helps with eating with me. It's like sometimes I get like when I get stressed out or I get nervous or anxious about going somewhere or doing something, mm-hmm. I'll have a hard time eating. Yeah. And like my, like I get nauseous from that mm-hmm. and smoking yeah. or eating some cannabis always gets my appetite going. Cool. And, and that's why, and that's why that. a lot of cancer survivors or, or cancer sufferers uh, use cannabis is because it does that exact thing. And so there's nothing wrong with using it for it to do that, to overcome anxiety or whatnot. There's just, it's a cool, I mean, that's a cool thing that cannabis can do for so many different people to be mm-hmm. able to restore appetites and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go to the next. The numbers matter. Case. <laughs> we're going to cut, cut a bunch of that stuff out. Uh, yeah. So a week, uh, if maybe you, you might've heard some of the things there was a stuff we're going to make it to a weird transition here. My bad. Um, <laughs> it happens. Yeah. I was going off on some <laughs> weird tangent that didn't make any sense. So two more questions and then we're going to stop this episode. So do, number matter, do numbers matter, Casey? So numbers don't always matter. And uh, the only way you find that out is being open to trying different strains and like not – judging your pick like your picks of strains off of high thc yeah that there i feel like you're gonna get more disappointed than you are if you're just open-minded and go off of like what the strains are known to do what the genetics are known to like how they're gonna express their effects yeah. than anything and like when it's funny when you talk to the people that um are like oh i'm after the highest thc and you try to like talk to them, like not tell them that they're wrong, but tell them like, oh, there's more. Like, you know, like. Well, would you tell them that the highest amount of THC will not necessarily make you the most high? Yeah, and I have said that. There are syner- meaning that, there are synergistic effects to that's, that. E- that's a grenade that either goes off. It's like a fifty-fifty chance, like goes off on my side or on their side, and okay. it's not good. Like they don't, they think I'm like. Attack, not attacking them, but questioning what they know about smoking. Like, yeah, which sucks. Like, no, like, no one wants to get in that conversation. Like, no, that, and it, no that's not what I'm that. trying to do. I'm just trying to open their mind a little bit. Like, like, mm-hmm. hey, like, did you know this? Yeah. Have you tried this? Did you know about the terpenes uh, and the aromatherapy type of like effect with the THC high and. And also one. So you're you're talking more like an experience then that yeah. you, you want to give an experience, not necessarily high experience. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll also ask the question: to those people chasing the numbers, thinking the numbers really matter, like, what are you trying to do? And they just yeah. like get high. Well, that's it. Like they don't want to talk about anything else. And it always like I think it's funny. Now sometimes the, now the, uh, the the numbers do matter for some stuff. Now because I like to mix We're different CBDs. Yeah, and I like to mix yes mix different things. So sometimes I I will all have something Medicinal. that's that's really low THC or really mm-hmm. really low CBD or whatever else, and I want to mix a pure THC. And so what I want is I want something that's high in THC, not pure THC, but I want something high in THC because I know this other thing I have is not and mm-hmm. so i blend a lot of stuff and so i understand yeah. like yes numbers are important it depends on your intent but i do not think they but from everything that i've seen and heard and read they're not the case that they're not going to get you the highest necessarily mm-hmm. 
Um, don't chase, don't be a bandwagoner, I guess is what I'm saying, on to the numbers, like being like the highest is the baddest. And with the, the with the testing so far, the margin of error in some of the numbers is probably enough to make, is probably People enough don't hear that for, us to, too, for us right? to question. Um, now, there's nothing, I'm, there's, I don't think there's anything sinister going on because I no, think it's, I think it's, I think it's going on across the industry enough where it's all fair now. So I think that if that, you know, necessarily a 30 is a 30 anywhere, but that it may not be a 30 is sort of what I mean. Yeah, it might not really feel like what you think yeah. a 30 should be. And that's another point I wanted to make is that we'll have bargain buds that are like in the teens. So like yeah. anywhere from like 11 and a half to like. 17 percent and people see like 14 and like i'll offer that to them and they're like what are you talking about like are you disrespecting me like i want to get high though Uh, and i'm like no but then i i (laughs) dude it's it always catches me off guard and i try to like reel it in that's the weirdest thing because i had humama lose joints a joint the other day and it was like a 14 percent something or 17 percent something yeah Great. All this TJ's chocolate Kush, the backup joint that I have, great. that ooh, let me tell you, it's only like seventeen, but it hits like it's yeah. a hitter, like it's good. It was great. I loved it's it about I... how it's grown in that yeah. terms, like as far as the seventeen. Yeah, so like it's hard to get into it. Those they just haven't. I don't think they've smoked enough and been open minded in their smoking. Like they mm-hmm. haven't tried a lot of different things mm-hmm. and even cared to do that mm-hmm. for some reason or another, and it's. It's disappointing because there are, like, the numbers are going to lead you down, like, a disappointing road, I yeah, guess, that's, is what that's I'm problem. saying. Like, yeah, it's it's totally a problem. All right, last question, Casey. Terpenes. You said you could ask a lot about terpenes. Explain why they matter. Like, that's, we know, sort of know what they are. Terpenes give, give cannabis their aroma, their aroma and taste. So, there you go. Done. But why do they matter? What are they? What are they important in the process? They turn up. In my experience, they turn up the high. So they turn up the the total effect of the high with the aroma, like with an aroma therapy, um, type of effect on your body. So like it takes the THC and it amplifies it amplifies the THC psychoactivity experience or body high experience. Yes. With the reaction to the aroma aromas and terpenes are the stuff is in essential oils yeah so it's the same ke- like chemical reaction you would have with an essential oil mm-hmm. and being calming being a uh, dilation of your lungs like better breathing more s- that's why i use uh, one of the terpenes alpha pinene as i use before i do my long runs and actually it's a bronchial dilator opens yeah. up my lungs same. so like yeah. when you start to tell people if you're looking at it from a medicinal standpoint the terpenes do matter mm-hmm. and like that's where you had the fall off. Are we drinking terpenes? Didn't you put some yeah, drops I of put, terpenes in our thing? Yeah, I put a little bit of that. Yeah, so it's um, some pineapple diesel, pineapple something. This one is Ash- Express. No, this no. one's actually a new one, Alaska Thunderfuck. Oh, we have those. Yeah, we're trying here. the ATF. Oh, very cool. So it was a little. Um, the uh, I haven't. I, uh, very piney. Piney, and then it was. Uh, it's not sweet at all, which is. So that would be more relaxing and sedative if it was though. That would be probably Maracine. Mm. Wow. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, the one, the Pineapple Express that we had last week was a lot, or two weeks ago was, a, or three weeks ago, whatever, it was a lot sweeter. This one's more like, uh, there's like a pine needle in my, in my glass, but mm-hmm. not in a bad way, which is the weirdest thing to say, because the pine needle doesn't sound like it would yeah, taste good, but it it's most... not, it's the essence of the pine needle. It's yeah. what it is. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. but without. It's just like the, if somebody made a tea of some pine needles, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's but just the good, oils. But, but then added good stuff that made it taste good. Mm-hmm. That makes any it sense. It has no, er, it doesn't have like an earthy plant matter no. or taste at all. It's no. just, it's just that first It's part. just the piney, like resiny taste. All right. Yeah. Okay, cool. So on that note, uh, I think we're good. Yeah. All right. So thank you very much. Take care. Peace out. The key to using cannabis as an appetite suppressant is the cannabinoid called THCV. It's the most psychoactive of all the cannabinoids, and it actually amps the THC high up for a short amount of time. And is also probably responsible for those mini freakouts you see people have when they have a little too much sativa for the very first time. Anyway, there's a bunch of readings and studies that show that THCV is the key to this. And it's uh, been prevalent in many of the strains that I have because I use it as part of my recovery from psych meds. 
but I'm careful only to use it during the day because I want to actually be hungry. I don't want to starve myself. Um, the THCV ends up, uh, I end up snacking a lot more instead of eating one big meal, which works for me. And I lost 35 pounds this year. Peace out again.